The coroner's inquiry into the Tanjung Paga car crash reveals the driver was over the alcohol limit. Ukraine's president is set to give an address via video link at this weekend's Shangri-La Dialogue. And the Jurassic World series is back for the final time. Will you watch it or leave it? Good evening, you're watching The Big Story with me, Harianto Diman. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you will not miss a single episode. According to a coroner's inquiry into the fatal Tanjung Paga car crash that killed five people, the white BMW M4 had hit speeds of up to 148 km per hour before the collision. And that's almost three times the 50 km per hour speed limit for the stretch along Tanjung Paga Road. Jonathan Long Chunwe, who owned the car, was at the wheel when it crashed. Now, the autopsy showed that Mr. Long had a blood alcohol reading of 86 mg of alcohol per 100 ml of blood. The legal limit is 80 mg per 100 ml. Mr. Long was one of four people to drive his newly purchased BMW that night. Only two of the four, Mr. Long and Eugene Yap Tsengmin, were among the five people in the car when it was Mr. Long's turn to drive. The others were Wilson Tio Chi Siang, Elvin Tan Yong Hao, and Gary Wong Hong Chie, making up a total of one driver and four passengers although the car only has designated seats for one driver and three passengers. The inquiry is adjourned. Now, our court correspondent who was in attendance describes the mood at the hearing. Basically, as with most um, other coroner's inquiries, the moods for such hearings are usually extremely sombre because you've got to remember that ultimately for these kind of cases, people actually died. Lives were lost. So moods in coroner's inquiries are always very serious. Lots of very um, sad, very unhappy people in the galleries um, or even among the next of kin as they um, pre um, listen to the case that's been presented in court. The case itself was moved to a much bigger courtroom. So I predict today there were about 50 people seated in the gallery alone. And that doesn't include the law, the lawyers for some of the um, deceased parties, um, the next of kin, and of course, members of the media. And I've got to tell you that um, the journalists um, and other members of the media turned up in full force. The inquiry has been adjourned to a later date because the state coroner himself said that um, they, they need to assess whether there's a need for more witnesses to be called forward to present their cases before the court. So for now, today, there have, been, there have been two witnesses, which is basically the I.O., as well as um, the, SC, uh, the SCDF fire investigator who presented their cases. So we're going to expect that the state coroner will be giving his findings at a later date. And more details have emerged from the coroner's inquiry. Now, the court heard that the airbags of the car did not deploy in the accident. This was because the sensors were located at the front and sides of the vehicle, whereas the point of impact was at the rear. And the driver, Jonathan Long, was likely to have been alive shortly after impact, breathing in significant amounts of smoke from the fire before dying from severe burns. Now, you can get more updates on the inquiry at straightstimes.com. 30 HDB resale flats changed hands for at least a million dollars in May as resale prices rose for the 23rd straight month. Most of these million-dollar transactions were in Bishan, with five units sold there followed by four in Bukit Merah, then three each in Tuapayo, Angmokyo, Queenstown and the central area. The other nine were in Kalangwanpo, Clementi, Serangoon, Ishun, and for the first time in Pasiris and Woodlands. 
The most expensive was a five-room unit in Anderson Road, which sold for a record $1.4 million. The Health Sciences Authority warning people against using a skin cream called Star Cream. Despite the claim, despite the cream claiming to have all natural herbal extracts and no steroids, HSA found it containing a potent steroid that could lead to adverse health effects after prolonged use. A four-month-old infant who's had the cream applied for his diaper rash since he was two weeks old was hospitalized for a serious adverse reaction. He was persistently vomiting and his eyeballs turned inwards towards the nose. He also has a bulging skull, a sign of high intracranial pressure. Preparations are well underway for Asia's top security summit taking place this weekend at the Shangri-La Hotel. The event takes place amid rising tensions between the US and China. Top officials in attendance include Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, who will deliver the Shangri-La Dialogue's keynote speech on Friday. US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin speaks on Washington's policy in the Indo-Pacific on Saturday. And China's Minister of National Defense Wei Fenghe will share Beijing's vision for regional order on Sunday. Political correspondent Justin Ong with more on what to expect from the summit. So for starters, there will be some 500 delegates from 42 countries, uh, including more than 60 ministers and senior defense officials, gathering in person at the Shangri-La Hotel in Orchard Road for the dialogue. As you say, there are rising tensions between the US and China, and I think that is really what is going to take center stage. Uh, for one, the speeches by the American and Chinese defense ministers, while they will hopefully give some clarity to their thinking and positioning in the region, we can also expect them to take the time to trade barbs and pointed remarks in the direction of each other. Uh, arguably, the more significant event will be a one-on-one -on -one meeting between General Austin and General Wei on the sidelines of the dialogue. This will be the first time that they come face to face since uh, President Joe Biden took office. So both US and Chinese officials have said that this discussion will focus on managing competition and finding ways to cooperate. Uh, secondly, Taiwan will surely be on the agenda at the conference, especially after what Joe Biden said last month, that the US would get involved militarily should China attack Taiwan. Now, these remarks caused some uproar in Beijing, uh, you know, which views Taiwan as its territory. So on the, in, in terms of the third item on the agenda, we can expect uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine to be a point of interest. Uh, there, there will be conversations on how the conflict appears to have you know, bifurcated the world order into the US, Ukraine and democracies on one side and China and Russia and autocracies on the other. Uh, reports indicate that Ukraine will be represented by its deputy foreign minister, but the Russians will not be attending. Uh, dialogue organizers also just released this afternoon the full speaker list, and it shows that actually Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will be delivering a special virtual address on Saturday afternoon. The very last public session will involve uh, Singapore's own Minister for Defense, Dr. Ng Enghen, and he will speak on new ideas for securing regional stability. Malaysia's proposed anti-hopping bill will be tabled when Parliament begins its scheduled meeting this July 18th, instead of a special one-day Parliament sitting. The bill is related to prohibition on switching parties by members of the lower house of Parliament. And among the several reasons cited for not holding a special sitting to debate it was the cost of holding one, as well as the absence of MPs who will be abroad on official work. Welcome to Jurassic World. Raw. <laughs> now, the latest movie in the Jurassic Park franchise is finally out in cinemas. Joining us is film correspondent John Louis, who's already seen it. John, I know that there are some familiar faces from the earlier movies, uh, but do they help Jurassic World Dominion and the franchise on a high? I wish I could tell you I'll give you a better answer, but no. I, sadly, they were all brought back for nothing, which is such a waste, uh, such a pity. Now, um, nothing in here will make you excited. It's all cliches, which you have seen a million times before. But the most frustrating thing is 
all the storylines are so obvious, but it takes so long to unfold. I'll give you a couple of, of examples, okay? There is a literal plague of monsters that is hurting farmers, and no one seems to be in a real panic about it. There's a slow investigation going on. They should be calling the army and the navy. They should be sending nuclear missiles, but they don't do anything. And, and worse is everything points to this one bad guy. So if this were a James Bond movie and the, the villain was standing in front of of the, all the characters played by Sam Neill and Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt and Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum. The villain could be standing right in front of them and say, hey, I have a secret lair in the mountains which I conduct experiments, genetic experiments, and I wear this turtleneck sweater and I talk about a new age for mankind. But no, I'm totally not the bad guy. No, not me. No, no. And then they'll all sit and they all look at him and go, Okay, that sounds plausible. I guess we'll just creep around and do our own investigations and get into, into dangerous encounters with reptiles. I mean, these people are more thorough than a police force, okay? They will gather all the bits of evidence and you go, what, has the investigation stopped? No, they are still investigating. We need to gather, take a long time and gather proof for a concrete case. Oh dear, dear. Looks like I'll save money on this one then, John. Well, that was film correspondent John Lui. And now, food editor Tan She Yin has just the perfect pick to satisfy your caffeine cravings. Shui, you've been checking out a new coffee bar, and I hear that something has caught your attention. Hey, Yan, I have three words for you iced cocoa espresso. So it's from Kohi, which is a Thai chain of coffee places. And they've opened a, an outlet in Singapore in Juchet, which as you know, is painfully hip, right? But they've got this super addictive drink that I can't get enough of. And it's really iced coconut water with a shot of espresso in it. It is so refreshing on a hot day. And you know, Shre, I'm not a coffee person, but I will check it out. And that was food editor Tan Shre Yin. And if you love dance, then this is a show you cannot miss. The Contact Contemporary Dance Festival is back after two years, with incredible performances lined up, including this one from Italy's Compagna The Pala Danza. Now, the festival runs from June 13th to July 3rd. And those are our top stories for today. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Harian Todiman. See you tomorrow on The Big Story.